This video will be about the lab work and treatments done for diabetes, specifically for diabetes mellitus. Usually, when people talk about diabetes, they were referring to diabetes mellitus. Lab work. The idea with diabetes mellitus is that we have a large amount of sugar in our blood. We have equipment that can measure the amount of sugar in the blood, but we have a problem. The amount of sugar in our body changes depending on when we last ate, how much we ate, and the amount of exercise we've done. So we have three strategies to combat this problem. The first strategy is to have the person starve for eight hours straight before the blood is checked. Water is okay. Our second strategy is to give the patient a specific amount of sugar and then measure the blood sugar two hours later. Last. We have the hemoglobin A1c test. Let's talk more about this one. The idea is that the sugar in our blood can stick to the red blood cells. More sugar means more will get stuck on. Since a red blood cell lasts for 120 days, the hemoglobin A1c gives us an estimated average of the amount of sugar in our blood for the past three months. So here are our three strategies. And this is a table. In the columns, we have prediabetes and diabetes. Think of prediabetes as a warning that you're getting close to full-blown diabetes. These are the measurements for each strategy. Now, how many chances do we have before being officially diagnosed with diabetes? Either two different tests fall in the diabetes column, or the same test shows diabetes on two different days. Now, what if we fall into the diabetes column we have treatments available. The treatment is based on whether you have type 1 or type 2 diabetes. Let's start with type 1 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is when insulin never shows up. The answer is easy. We give the patient insulin. The insulin can then come and let the glucose into the cell. The challenge, though, lies in figuring out how much insulin to give. This is how much. We multiply the patient's body mass by 0.2 and start going up from there. But there's more. We have long-acting, or all-day insulin, and short-acting, mealtime insulin. This is a 24-hour clock. Long-acting insulin can be taken before going to bed or after waking up. Short-acting insulin is taken with each meal. Let's do some math together. If a person is 60 kilograms, then 0.2 times 60 equals 12, and so the patient needs 12 total units of insulin. But what's the deal with the long and short acting insulins? We split the total into two halves, but what do we do about the short acting needed for each meal? We split the short acting into three parts. That comes out to two units with each meal. Here's how it would look. Some patients use what's called an insulin pump that does all this for them. Hooray, we treated type 1 diabetes. Wasn't that easy? Well, sadly, it's easier than treating type 2 diabetes. But let's get started. As a refresher, type 2 diabetes is when the cell doesn't respond to insulin. The treatment strategies revolve around too much sugar being added and not enough being removed. Statistics show that 80% of type 2 diabetic patients have BMIs greater than 30. And so, the first step is to decrease the amounts we eat and to use the fuel already stored in our body. If that's not enough, then we can use medications. There are six that I will be covering. These five are known by their suffixes. Medications can rely on more than one strategy. Strategy number one, help insulin. The idea is to get the cells to respond to insulin. Metformin does this. The glitosomes do this. Strategy number two, stop making glucose. The body has a hormone called glucagon. Glucagon tells the liver 
to make glucose. Metformin stops glucagon and therefore stops glucose production. The tights do this as well. See, watch. The gliptins do this as well. See, watch. Just kidding, you get the idea. Strategy number three, decrease appetite. By decreasing appetite, we will consume less sugar. The tights do this. See, watch. No more hunger. The gliptins do this as well. Strategy number four, more homemade insulin. The idea is that there is not enough insulin to get the cell to respond. So we add more insulin to interact with the cell and get it to respond. To understand how they work, we have to introduce an organ in the body called the pancreas. To me, the pancreas looks like corn. The pancreas has a specific group of cells in it. These cells are called beta cells. Beta cells make and release the body's insulin. We need to get the beta cells to release more insulin. The rides do this. See? Strategy number five, pee the glucose out. Normally, the kidney filters glucose out of the blood. However, since glucose is important to the body, the kidney will bring glucose back into the blood. We can stop this. The flozins do this. They make the kidney keep the glucose in the urine to be peed out. Strategy number six, store-bought insulin. Unfortunately, the pancreas's beta cells will eventually burn out, trying to meet demands. In this case, we give the patient pre-made insulin. Again, with the idea that the cell will more likely respond to extra insulin. I made a list of pros and cons for each medication we went over. The big thing with metformin is that it causes lactic acid buildup, which is not a problem because our livers can take care of that. However, patients with liver disease, such as chronic alcohol use, may not be able to take it. Also, metformin is removed from our bodies by our kidneys. Patients with kidney disease may not be able to take it. The big thing with glitazone is that it weakens bones, increasing the risk of fracture. The big thing with the tides is it's expensive and it has to be injected. The big thing with gliptins is that patients are at increased risk for pancreatitis. The big thing with the rides is that if the dosing is wrong, then the patients can end up with dangerously low blood sugar. The big thing with flozin is that it increases the risk of urinary tract infections. It can also make the patient's blood pressure dangerously low. Lastly, since diabetes damages the body's arteries, many organs are affected. There's a chance your primary care provider will want you to see a cardiologist, an ophthalmologist, and or a podiatrist. In fact, your doctor may start you on a cholesterol medication like a statin because diabetes is already hitting the arteries. I will go over the causes, signs and symptoms, and dangers of diabetes in other videos. As always, thank you for watching.